important thing, so I'm going to get going. Um, so uh, it's been a while since we uh, have last met, and um, at the same time, I have some uh, um, important um, material to deliver on here today uh, and for later this week. Um, I wanted to begin just to remind people very quickly that we've been taking four perspectives on uh, dynamical systems, two perspectives that are fundamentally structural perspectives, and two perspectives that are that are behavioral perspectives. Um, the structural perspectives involve uh, characterization of these systems uh, using declarative uh, mechanisms such as stocks and flows, state charts, etc with a particular emphasis in continuous systems on the stocks and flows. Uh, and secondly, as a second structural perspective, uh, mathematical um, characterization. Reflecting the fact that the mathematical characterization is of systems of ordinary differential equations um, collapses down a lot of the um, elements of structure that are important for human understanding and that are higher level quantities, such as um, uh, where we have uh, a representation explicitly of a flow between stocks um, when we use a stock and flow model uh, that gets uh, mapped down into two differentials, one associated with two different state variables, the inflow uh, state variable and the, out the, the state variable into which it flows and the state variable out of which it flows. We also are taking a to behavioral perspective, who over time figures in state spacecrafts, which we have looked at um, uh, periodically in past lectures, but which will be the center of attention today. And uh, for the purposes of um, getting specific about lending intuition for dynamical systems behavior, we focused in on representations of continuous dynamical systems. Um, uh, but harking back to the fact that a dynamical system in general is defined as a system whose behavior depends uh, on its state. So the behavior elicited from that system, in this case written for the particular case of ODEs written as the, the derivative of the, the state vector with respect to time, how different elements of the state vector are changing with respect to time, how quickly they're rising, falling, staying the same, etc., is of some function of state. And we um, unpack this uh, further, um, and uh, we noted that um, for the very important subcase of linear systems, um, we have a situation where we can simply characterize the behavior of the system as a matrix times the current state. So, so in other words, the rate of change of the state, or S dot, is simply equal to a matrix times the, the current state. And this reflects the fact that in general, um, more generally, uh, we can write the behavior of a system um, at a certain uh, point in time as being uh, F of that or around a certain point as being f uh, at that point, that, that sort of general function that, that tells us how the, the rate of change changes as a function of, of state. Um, uh, but, uh, but consider the behavior around that point. And we consider this um, as consisting of several, addition of several terms, a linear term shown here, and higher order terms and the argument was that, um, that the behavior around this point, S question mark, um, can be characterized, uh, if we're right in the area of S question mark, with a high degree of fidelity by just considering that linear term. Because the higher order terms involve uh, S minus S question mark squared, for example, uh, or cubed, et cetera, which are very, very small quantities. Now, this matrix that we have that plays such an important role with this linear term um, is a matrix which, of course, has a name. And what is that name? It's the Jacobian matrix. Um, and the Jacobian matrix, um, 
its job in life is to tell us how quickly uh, different elements of, um, or, or how quickly this function of state that gives us the rate of change of that state changes as we as we consider different subcomponents of that function, for example, the components of that function uh, with respect to variable x, so f sub x um, representing the scalar function that tells us how does the rate of change of x depend on the current state of the system, x, y, z, etc. Um, or f z, f sub z, which tells us how the rate of change of the z variable depends on uh, successive state variables x, y, z, et cetera. The Jacobian matrix tells us how do those components, f sub x, f sub z, et cetera, how do those change with successive um, small displacements in, in those state variables, x, for example, y, z, et cetera. Um, and uh, we use this to kind of move beyond the, uh, the notation associated with, um, uh, with these arrows and simply write s dot equals a s, reflecting the fact that s is a vector um, in general. And s dot is the rate of change of that vector. And with a linear system, um, we have simply s dot equals a s, right? Um, for a nonlinear system, we're going to have, we're going to need to reason about this term up front, f of s question mark, uh, which is going to play a very big role in, in shaping the behavior of different areas of the state space for different s question marks. But for a linear system, uh, we can actually linearize around s question mark being zero. Um, and it basically it all unpacks to something where the rate of change of s is just given by the Jacobian times the current state s. And we're going to see this in the state space diagrams in a very graphical way, reflecting an understanding of how matrices operate on vectors. So much of this lecture is going to relate to different understandings of matrices involved in this, uh, in this picture we've been laying out. Um, one of them we talked about last time, and I'm just going to quickly review. So if we consider this notes on matrices, okay, um, this is a presentation involving sort of different ways to understand matrices that be interwoven into my description today. So, one of them that we discussed yesterday was associated with this Jacobian <coughs> matrix and how it, how it operates, serves to operate on small displacements x. Where this came in, in a big way, and unfortunately it had to be erased due to the, the simulathon um, materials here, um, it, it played a role in, uh, for example, this um, uh, this e equation here or in this one here. Wherever we're multiplying this matrix times this displacement, okay? The idea here was that this displacement is, is a vector, right? Um, S minus S question mark is some particular vector, vector of delta X, delta Y, delta Z, right? That's what this, that's what this is. It's a vector. S minus S question mark is some particular vector. Um, and we could write it down as here as delta X, you know, some delta Y, delta Z, um, and however, however many of these uh, coordinates we have. That's, our, that's a, a vector that we're multiplying here times the Jacobian matrix. So this is some displacement vector of S from S question mark. Now by multiplying it by this matrix, I'm arguing that it's, it's useful to think about a matrix from this perspective. Uh, one of these four perspectives I'll be introducing for matrices by which to understand them as simply consisting of a weighted sum, as it were, of these elements of these, of these rows up here by these delta x, delta y, delta z. Right? 
Okay, so the idea here is that that uh, if we consider the operation of a matrix J times delta X, and we have something like this. Um, here, the elements of the vector delta X reflect how far we go in each successive direction. And this matrix times delta X is basically serving to total up how much each of these functions F sub X would change as its total change uh, given these successive displacements. So this gives the rate of change of f of x with respect to a change in x, right? And if we multiply this, this rate of change, how quickly f of x is changing as we change the x coordinate, and we multiply times delta x, we will be getting how much f sub x changes. For example, how much it goes up as a result of this change delta x, right? We have some displacement in the x direction, and this tells us how quickly f sub x is rising, how that slope in the x direction. So if we multiply this slope in the x direction by how far we go in that x direction, we get how far we rise in that, in that because of that change, right? It's like uh, we have this slope uh, here. Um, where, where to, uh, to put this. We have a slope going in, in that direction, and that's maybe partial f sub x, partial x. It's a slope, it's a first derivative. And we're going some distance in that direction, call it delta x here. And by multiplying the two, we get this change in f sub x coming about because of that delta x, right? And then similarly, if you think about how a vector is multiplied here by, by successive elements, if we have the vector up here, each successive element, delta x, delta y, delta z, multiplying by corresponding elements here, we have, we're going to have the next element. What's the element that's going to be times delta y? If delta y is the second element in the vector, what's the second element here? That's, what's the element that's going to be multiplied by it? Yeah, delta fx delta y. It's the rate of change of x in the y direction. And that's going to be multiplied by the displacement in the y direction. And it's reflecting the fact that f of x, for example, may be going up quickly in x, but only slowly as we go in the y direction. And, and so as we go in the y direction, it will rise maybe, but it will rise less, less quickly, right? And so it is with respect to each of these. In each case, we're taking into account how quickly f sub x is rising as we go in a certain direction, x direction, y direction, z direction. And we're totaling those all up. That's what, a, that's what a, the matrix multiplication by a vector can be looked at as it's kind of a dot product of this row with that vector. So we're at multiplying f sub x, partial f sub x, partial x times delta x plus the partial f sub x, partial delta y times delta y plus partial delta f sub x, delta z, or, or partial z times the delta z, etc. And so in short, we're getting how much does f of x go up as we go in x direction and that so the delta x in the x direction, delta y in the y direction, delta z in the z direction, and we're getting a total change in delta f sub x, right? Right? That, that's what we're getting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, by multiplying this j times x for that first element. And, and it's similar for successive rows. We're just considering how does each successive sort of element of, of f change as we, um, as we go in each of the x, y, and z directions, okay? Um, so that's what's going on here is we multiply j times delta, this, this vector, this vector, this entire vector, um, delta, delta x, okay? Um, uh, so 
So I, I should be careful here, and I, and I realize the notation here. I need to go back and, and make it less ambiguous, because this x, I'm using x to denote the factor as a whole, but then I'm using it to refer to particular elements, and so I, I need to be uh, cautious about that. Think of this vector as delta, you know, delta v or something, or delta s, um, the change in s. And the elements of the vector delta s reflect uh, how far we go in each direction, x in the x direction with delta x, and the y direction with delta y, and the z direction with delta z. Okay? So here we are essentially adding up, so this is um, going back to the matrix, we're, we're taking into account the amount of displacement direction i, how quickly the function is changing in that direction, and we're using it to figure out the total change in f uh, in that, that direction, okay? Um, as a result of, of that displacement, okay? Um, now, for our case, our particular case here, where this, ch this displacement is s minus s question mark, um, we would basically be considering as we go away from s question mark in a certain direction, how is f changing? Um, how are each elements of f changing? And, and that's taking into account you know, the fact we're leaving s question mark in a certain direction. It's kind of correcting for f of s question marks estimate of the, the rate of change of s. For a linear system, basically this f of s question mark disappeared because s question mark is zero. And basically what we're going to have here is as s changes, as, as the state changes in a certain direction, as we go in a certain direction for state, we are going to be figuring out the total value of f as it determines the x, the x uh, element of the vector um, uh, through this multiplication and similarly for f sub y and f sub z. Okay? So here we are going to be having s here as our total vector and by taking its dot product with this matrix or by taking the, the product of the matrix with that s we're going to be figuring out what is the value of f in, the, in its x component for this s. What if its value in y for this s? What's its value in z for this s? Okay? Um, for, for a linear system. So I'd like to look at this for a particular example, if we could, um, from this perspective. So if we go to our maple sheet here, and I'm going to go here to the first of the, um, of the components uh, where we have two, two different state variables, okay? It's zero C, it's this guy here. We have two different state variables. Hmm? Um, these are two different first order delays. This is the first perspective, right? It's a perspective, it's a declarative characterization system structure in terms of stocks and flows. Um, and if we go look at this, we're going to have a mean time in each of these, one for the first, two for the second, okay? So which, this is, that's the mean time in this stock. We set this stock going, there's no inflows. What's going to happen? If, if we set this stock initially, this one to be 400 initially, and this one to be 100 initially, what's going to be going on with these? with these stocks? Are they gonna stay at the same value? Are they gonna rise? Okay, they're gonna go down. They're gonna decrease according to a first order delay. Which of them will be going down uh, faster from the perspective of um, how quickly it halves its value? The meantime, of one will go down faster in the meantime of two. It will, it will, it'll be dropping, it'll take, it'll, it'll reach its halfway point sooner than would be the case for a Y. Y is associated with the mean time of two, okay? And so if we were to run this, right, we would, um, we would see them decreasing. And maybe what I'll do here is 
just run it like this and um, we'll go grab it out. Here we are, here's uh, Y and we'll here uh, do, um, sorry, Y and then uh, X, okay, and uh, there we go. And I'll do all input windows so we only have one of each. Boom, okay, get rid of that. There we go, okay. So we have a decrease, right? This is our dynamic window view over time. And you notice both of them have the same characteristic shape, but one of them starts higher, but disappears sooner. This top one, X, it starts at 400. The bottom one starts at, at 100. But the bottom one is still going strong at time seven, for example, or at least it's going pretty significantly, it still has some value, times seven this top one, even though it started four times as large, it's virtually disappeared. Why is that? You said it earlier. I'm, I'm, I'm asking for a fairly obvious thing. It's because this top one is associated with a what? Yeah, it's faster. The mean time in X is smaller, so it tends to decay a lot faster. Or put it another way, if we view this as a rate constant, the rate constant, how does the rate constant relate to the, the mean value? If we view this as an alpha, rate constant alpha, how does that relate to the mean value mu? One over mu, right. So the rate constant for the second one is smaller, it's half the value of the top one. So even though the top one starts larger, you know, it decays much faster because its rate constant is one compared to the bottom one where the rate constant is, is 0.5, right? Um, okay, so these are its face, faces in a familiar way. I'd like now to, to just recall the differential equation behind this. Um, well, you should tell me the differential equation. It's in the Maple notebook for sure, but, but why don't you tell me the differential equation? What's the differential equation behind this? I know it's been a while, so this is why I'm doing this. So, so uh, why, what is the, the, the differential equation behind it? What's the series of differential equations? Let's do it as a vector. Let's do it as a vector, right? Okay, so give me the vector. The left-hand side is what? Yeah, yeah, it's the... It's, it's a dot, so we're gonna have dot of, of x and y. Okay, um, maybe I'm drawing this too big, but your silence makes me wonder. Um, maybe I need to draw it like as big as I am or something. Um, maybe I need to have like differential equations walk around the lab. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Um, okay, so, so give me the Give me the, um, the formula here. So what's on the right-hand side here? Well, sorry? Okay, yeah, so we'll get to that. We'll get to that, but just give it to me as, as basic equations right now. Well, look, if the left side is a vector, this, this is a vector, right, x, y? And so x, y dot is a vector. And so the right-hand side's got to be a... Uh, Vector, yeah, okay, and what's the vector? What's the first element of the vector? It's f sub x, which is what? Yeah, okay, good, good. Uh, well, okay, is it? Okay, so it's, yes, we could express it like that, but let's be very, very specific here. The rate of change of x is just Rate of change of x is one. So, so if the rate of change of x were one, what would happen here? It would just go down through the. It would it would go down through the floor. That wouldn't be good. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. It's got it. Look, this is a dynamic system, right? Its rate of change depends on its state. The rate of change of this first one, it depends on what? 
I spy with my little eye what? X. Yeah, it's got to depend on X. That's why there's this arrow there. So, so its rate of change has to depend on what? X. <laughs> okay. Um, X is is that all though? Maybe. Minus. Okay. Now we're talking. And what should we really put there? <laughs> well, look, for it to be dimensionally correct, this is a rate of change. This is a rate of change. What are its units? If x is measured in, if x is measured in liters, what's the rate of change? If we, if you view it as a as a dimension, it's well, okay. Let's say it's people per time. Okay, D, a dx dt, right? If if x is people. Uh, people dot it's going to be people per unit time and so on the right hand side we're, we have to have people per unit time for it to be dimensionally consistent so if we have an x we need to have a time yeah we need to have one here right that's a one okay right right yeah. right okay um uh, and what do we have for y? What, what's the rate of change of y? Minus y over two. It's, yeah, minus y over 2. Good, good. This is not a dot. It's a mistake. Um, okay, there we go. Okay? Do, do you recognize that? Yes. This is a first order delay. This is a first order delay. Are they coupled? No, they're not coupled. Each one is independent of the other. Each one proceeds as a solitude. Okay, mm -hmm. now, um, we called this thing f sub x, right? This was kind of f sub x, and we called this f sub y in my, in my sort of slides there, right? This was... This was our f sub x, right? This was our f sub y. Okay, so so this is a, a a good thing, and that's all I was I was looking for at this at this immediate juncture here. So this is our our formulas for it, right? Now now I'd like you to derive the Jacobian for this, okay? So given that that's f sub x and that's f sub y, what is the Jacobian? Well, we know the Jacobian in general is f sub x partial what? X. X. And what's and this is a 2D system, so how big is this matrix? It's, it's two by two. two. So what's the entry here in the upper right? F sub X. X. Yeah, it's it's X, because all these ones in the first row relate to how quickly X is changing. Partial Y. Partial y. Good. Good. And the bottom row? Y partial X. X. Good, yeah. Because remember, these guys here at the bottom, they're all dictating how quickly, what is this? Y. y. They're dictating how quickly, on, uh, on the bottom row, Y is changing. The ones on the top row are how quickly X is changing. <laughs> Successive columns relate to how does that those that rate of change change as you go in the x direction, y direction, z direction, right? Because if you multiply it by a vector, which is x, y, and z. Okay. So this is this is good. So this is it in general. What do we have it for in particular? What what are its particular values here then? So given that that's it in general, what is it in our case? What is partial f sub x partial x? Take the derivative of this guy minus x over one with respect to x. What is it? Minus one. Minus one. Yeah, and I can make it minus one over one, and, but I'm not going to do it. Okay. How about how about partial f sub x partial y? Zero. Zero. Right. Okay. How about partial f sub y partial x? Zero. Okay. Yeah. There's, this doesn't depend on x. As we change x. 
Does this thing change at all? No. So its rate of change with respect to x is zero. What is it with respect to y? Minus a half, right? Okay, so there's our, there's our Jacobian matrix right there. Um, and uh, you'll find that, that uh, this has some meaning to it, right? Like if, if this is our J, and given that this is a linear system, if we multiply J times some state, right? Any state, state here consists of what? X and Y, right? If we multiply J times any state, we'll get back the rate of change of the state, right? So if we multiply this, let's, let's imagine having a state of, imagine we had a state of a, a hundred and fifty, okay? One, the first element of the state is a hundred and the second element is fifty. What I'm telling you is we multiply this J, this Jacobian, by that state, we will get the rate of change of state. So let's try it. Should we not? Okay, so 100, so, so we have this vector here, 150, right? So, so the two elements of it, right? So here we go, 150, right? There we go, um, there we go. Um, and we multiply it, what are we gonna get out? If we multiply these, this is 100. Let me, let me just make it more obvious. There we go, 150. So if we multiply this by that, what are, what's, so we're multiplying a matrix by a vector, and what are we gonna get? We're gonna get a vector. We're gonna get back a vector. It's gonna be a, you know, a vector with two, a length two. And what, what's its first element gonna be? Minus 100. That comes from the minus one times the hundred plus zero times fifty, right? And and what's the second element gonna be? Minus twenty five. Where'd that twenty five come from? Yeah. Zero times a hundred minus a half times fifty. And that I claim is JS, and so therefore this must be the what? rate of change of s, right? And is it? Yeah, it's the rate of change of s. If we had, here we go, right? If I were to plug in here 100 for x, its rate of change would be 100 divided by 1. So it'll be 100, and it's in outflow direction, so it's going to be minus 100 is the rate of, so, the, so x is going to be changing at, at, a, at a rate of minus 100, meaning it's dropping at a, hundred times per ton unit, right? Um, at that time in Y, if we started Y at 50 and we considered its rate of change, well, its rate of change, there's only one flow and it flows out. So it's, and the value of that flow is gonna be Y divided by what? This, mean time in Y, which is two. So its rate of change is gonna be 50 divided by two, but it's an outflow. So it's gonna be 25 going up, right? That's gonna be its rate of change. So we just, all we do is we multiply by it. It's, it's like you substitute in those values for X and Y and boom, you know, we, we get out the rates of change of X and Y, right? Okay, now I, I showed last time what it's, what it's, it's, um, and so here you get uh, decay here, just like we saw. This is our formulas here for it. And, and we're going to get that sort of behavior in state space. I argued that this made sense. And I want you to remind me, what's going on here? Why do we see this behavior? What's the x-axis? Well, it's the value, the first element, right? It's x. What's the y-axis? It's y, okay. Okay, happy, happy. Okay, so we're starting here at 400 and 100. What's, what is this telling us is going on? 
Yeah, we're, we're changing more quickly in X than we are in Y. We're, we're dropping in Y, but comparatively quickly, we're, we're dropping in, in X, which is exactly what we, what we saw when we were running it before what, when, when we were looking up here, right? X is dropping much more quickly than Y, right? Um, and, uh, and yet Y is changing and Y starts getting sucked towards this and, and gets sucked towards this axis. But that's, that's at its most basic level. But now I wanna start thinking more generally, if, we, if we're thinking about this interpretation of a matrix as operating on a vector here, um, uh, here, this this um, dot product here, this was giving us a perspective of how f changed as we changed uh, delta x, and and here delta x for a linear thing, this is this is entirely what gives us. The, um, the rate of change in state variable um, is just J times S, right? For a, for a linear system, this is a linear system. Let's go see if we can see this, and I'm gonna introduce another way to view this, okay? Um, in terms of the action of matrices. So here, as we go out, uh, say in the X direction, Right? As, as we go further and further in the x direction, you'll notice that all of the arrows are pointed in the same direction. Do you see that? All these arrows are pointed in the same direction. And if we go out in the y direction, all of the arrows are pointed downwards. Do you see that? Let's go, let's go in any direction. Let's, let's pick you know, 45 degrees. If you, know, if you go in the 45 degree direction, you'll notice that all the arrows are basically parallel to one another. Why does that have to be if it's linear? Suppose I pick a certain direction, a certain S. I, I, I pick a certain S. Why does it have to be if I go further in that direction that it's going to be we're gonna see those arrows in the same direction. Well, those arrows characterize the rate of change, right? How S dot and what are, how S, the direction in which S dot is, is trending. Not the magnitude, but the direction. So if I go in the same direction a little bit or a lot, if I, if I multiply S by two here in a linear system, what is S dot gonna do? by how much? By two. by two. In a linear system, if I double the state vector, if I go from going just a little bit in the 45 degree line to a lot in the 45 degree line, all I do is I double S dot. So it's still pointing, the, the arrows give me, you know, how quickly it's changing, you know, going down versus going to the, to, to the left. Um, and here, those arrows will still be parallel. We're we'll just we're seeing double the same the um, the rate of change, and and uh, the the x and y components of it are, are still in the same proportion. And so it is. So wherever we go in in these directions, we're going to see in a certain direction. No matter how far we go, we're going to see the same basic pattern of the rate of change. It's just gonna be double the old one or, or three times or 10 times or 100 times the, what it is with a smaller one. And the relative size of it, how quickly it's changing in X versus how quickly it's changing in Y is gonna be completely proportional for all of those. Um, so, yeah. Is, is that coming from um, the definition of the new system? And yes. X equal to alpha X. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it also comes out of the fact that um, of how matrix multiplication works here, that if you double the vector, the result of multiplying a matrix times double the vector is just double the result of it, of the matrix times that original vector. Um, so, so that is a feature of linearity. This is a linear system, or this is a linear operator, matrix multiplication. 
And with a linear operator, if you have, you know, f of uh, alpha x, it's equal to alpha f of x, right? Um, and that's true for linear systems, and it's true for matrix uh, matrix multiplication as a linear system. Yeah. Um, okay, but I wanna I wanna use this to now introduce another way of, of thinking uh, about a um, about a, a matrix. Okay, um, and I'm actually gonna go to the third one here, and we'll come back to the second one at some point. Um, this time or next. So a very valuable way to think about matrices is to think about them as, as operators that take an input and give out output. Okay? They map an input vector to an output vector. They map a, a vector in the row space to a to a vector in the in the column space, okay, um, and we're going to to go through this. But the basic idea is, this is going to give you some understanding by looking at a matrix what it does. And the main matrices we're going to be looking at this time are these Jacobians. We're going to take a look at a Jacobian matrix and be able to see how does it how does it act on these vectors in this plane? How does it act on these vectors as I go out in each direction? Um, to do this, I'd like to actually choose a, a slightly more interesting example, um, which we're gonna apply the same reasoning to, okay? And that's going to be this next one, which is recommended bo both by um, intellectual substance as well as by aesthetic uh, uh, benefits. So, okay, where, where, where am I? Um, okay, so here I was, and now I'm going to example 1A. Example 1A actually has a, uh, a model here, Venza model, which I've shared with you. I will go open it up here, um, and yeah, sure. Okay, so this is a second order delay. It's a series of coupled first order delays. And we're going to have a, um, once again, mean time in each. The first is one, the second is two, okay? Um, it is just therefore like before, x is decaying at a rate of one, y is decaying at a rate of, of two, uh, excuse me, uh, x is decaying, yes, it's at a rate of one, y is at a rate of 0.5, um, the mean time in y is two, the mean time in x is one. Okay, um, and here we're going to, uh, however, have this case where x is flowing into y. Okay, um, so uh, can someone give me the uh, formulae for for writing down what this uh, series of equations is? Can anyone give me the the corresponding um, the formulas here? So, so if I wrote this down as a series of ODEs, you should be able to give this to me right in the same form. So uh, I'm going to make space here, and what is it? So I'll make the annual birth flow here zero, okay, for simplicity. So, so what would x dot be? What is x dot? Mm -hmm. Sorry? <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> okay, so who else who else can give this? What X dot is what? If if you need help, Alex can write it down for you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what is X dot here? X over the Yeah. So zero is coming in. So we can ignore that flow for, for this discussion. And it's x over the mean time in x, which is just minus 1. Well, it's, it's, so it's, it's uh, over 1. That's the mean time. Um, and that's good. Um, does it, is there anything else? No. No. 
Okay, how about for Y? Ah, there's the rub. So what's Y? X over 1. Minus Y over 2. Good. Okay, now you'll notice that the flow from X to Y is now divided up here, right? This is kind of the inflow part. That's, that's good. So give me the Jacobian. What do I have to change here? How many entries do I have to change? Uh, one. Okay, so, so let's go through each of them. Partial F, partial X. Minus one. Partial F uh, sub X, partial Y. Zero, because F sub X doesn't depend on Y. Partial F sub Y, partial X. Positive one. This the second component of it, the minus y over two. Does that change with respect to x? No. So it's it's zero. Okay. And then partial f sub y, partial y. Minus one over two. Okay. So here we have this Jacobian, right? Okay. Um, we have that as the Jacobian. So, so that's, that's great. What sort of behavior do we see here for this if we run it? If we, if we start x as 400 and we start y as 0, what will x do? Strictly decreasing. It doesn't care about y at all. This is the same x as last time. So x is going to be dropping like a rock. What is y going to be doing? Sorry? It'll increase. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It'll be rocking and then it will drop. Okay, you didn't get that one. But um, <laughs> Alex, Alex barely appreciated that. It's going to rise and then it's going to drop. Um, right? Um, so here it's going to rise at first and, and drop. Why is it rising? Yeah, it's the inflow from X. Tons of X is coming in, and its value is not large enough to initially have much going out. Initially, as how many going out? If it starts at zero, initially its rate of change flowing out is what? Initially, zero. So the inflow is going to exceed the outflow. It rises, it's going to plateau, and then it will come down, right? So that's, that's the picture dynamically. What's going to be going on, though, in terms of these more interesting elements? So you see something like this, OK? Um, now, J Jacobian, we computed, and, and Maple is happy to oblige us. This is, what the, this is what the state state portrait is like. Now, for this part of learning about the operator matrices as operators, I want to think about. Um, matrices as as things that take input and return output okay and and here the input it's going to be taking is the state at any one point and the output it's going to be returning is the rate of change of that state okay um, and the matrix we're going to be working with is a Jacobian matrix right this takes in a state and by multiplying it by that state, in other words, by processing that state with the matrix, by taking that state in, the matrix taking that in as an input, it will give an output so that's the rate of change of X. Okay? It's going to give the rate of change of, of state, and which is going to be indicated by these arrows, so though only in its direction and not in its magnitude. Okay, so I want to think of matrices in this way, and we're going to learn how to read them in this way. But uh, I want to draw attention that the further we go in the, in the x direction, if we double ourselves in the x direction, it doesn't change this direction at all, for example. Or in the same thing in the y direction. All the arrows in a given direction are the same, the same alignment. You see that? In a given direction? No matter what direction I go, if I go further and further in that direction, the arrows are still in the same direction. Because, as I say, if I 
if I, I can, I, if I have a, something where it's linear, if I consider this system in a much longer vector s in a given direction or a much shorter one in that direction, s dot is just correspondingly multiplied by the appropriate constant. So its direction doesn't change. The direction of the arrow stays the same. Um, okay, now, I want to... I want to teach you to how to read matrices as far as how they act on these vectors. And the key thing comes from some of the videos I asked you to watch. So our Jacobian matrix is this one here. Minus 1, 1, 0, minus 0.5. Okay? Um, that's our Jacobian. It's on the board as well. Right? Now the key, the key understanding behind this ability to read matrices, I've tried to capture in my slides. And you should pay attention to it, and if necessary, go back to this. So the idea is, look, we're going to consider the vector multiplying matrix. Or for for a, th a thought piece, we're going to consider vectors that form this sort of, um, that fall into this sort of pattern. For example, one of the vectors s, imagine if the vector s were 1, 0, 0, okay? Um, so imagine we had here um, a vector for our 2D system that was just 1 and 0. What would we get back? If we multiply this matrix, this Jacobian matrix, by this vector 1, 0, well, if we multiply a matrix by a vector, what do we get back? A what? A vector. And what would that vector be if we multiply it by 1, 0? It'll be, what's that? The first column. It's going to be this column here, right? Because if you think about it, how, how matrix multiplication works, here we're taking, you know, each row, we're multiplying to each vector. So this guy is just going to pick out this element here on this row and all the rest would be zero. It's going to pick out this element here, right? And so it's going to be, be, that, um, uh, be that column. And in general, uh, and this is the one I went over here quickly, you know, in general, you can think of matrix multiplication times a vector as just telling you to, hey, give me a weighted, multi a, ma a weighted sum of the columns of the matrix. So the weights are just the elements of the vector, okay? So if we have a matrix A times a vector X, we can think of each successive element of X as saying how much of, it's like you're, you're placing an order uh, for lunch at a kiosk, a lunch kiosk. Maybe it's a food truck, or maybe it's a, it, it's a, it's a kiosk where they give you food, and you say, I want this much of this item, that much of that item, that much of that item. Each element of the vector tells us this. So the first element of X tells us how much of column one I want. The, sec the second elements of the vector X tells us how much of column two uh, of the matrix that I want, okay? Um, and the, the reason that this, is, uh, that this works is just how matrix multiplication is, is, is defined, right? I mean, at, at some level, you could think about it mechanically. There's deeper reasons yet as well. But if we think about you know, having a certain value uh, in each of the elements, that value is going to be for the first element of the vector. It's just going to be multiplied by the, first, the, first the entries of the first column, right? And the second element of the vectors can be multiplied by the entries of the second column and the third. So what the result that's going to come out is just going to be a weighted sum of these columns where the weights are given by these, the elements of the vector you're multiplying by, right? And that's a very useful way to often think about matrix multiplication. This is a weighted sum of the columns of x. The columns of x are just waiting there. And we're saying how much of each of them we want in x. And, and by multiplying a times x, we get a resultant vector, an, uh, an output vector, result, that's simply you know, those, the sum of those um, columns of a weighted appropriately by x. Do you see that? Do you see that that comes out of here, how it picks, 
how it multiplies it out. So if we have, you know, um, if we have here uh, a matrix, let's say, I don't know, um, you know, uh, two, one, and zero, two, or something like that, and we have a, a vector alpha and beta, right? I'm telling you that alpha and beta can be taken as saying, give me alpha much of column one and beta much of column two. And, and so what we're going to get out, I would argue, is going to be simply, hmm, simply alpha times column one plus beta times column two. And the reason you could see that is, well, why is that? Well, now let's perform this all in a very sort of step-by-step -step way. It's two times alpha, right? Plus zero times beta, right? That's that first element here. And then this is gonna be one times alpha plus two times beta, right? Which is going to be equal to, and you're gonna have these, these alphas here uh, in the betas. I'm gonna not write that. So it's two alpha plus, oops, two alpha. Uh, um, I should travel with, uh, with extra erasers. Um, there we go. Shouldn't have written that. Uh, two alpha, and then this is gonna be alpha plus two beta, right? Plus two beta. And that's exactly what this is, right? It's, it's uh, two alpha on the top. So this is two, I'm gonna write this up here. It's, it's two alpha uh, and alpha plus um, zero and two beta. And you add them together and all you're just gonna get is two alpha uh, and then uh, alpha plus two beta, right? And so it all checks. So basically here it's like you've got a menu. <laughs> the matrix is the menu and you're telling how much of each item on the menu you want and you get back that combination of dishes. You know, alpha much of column one, beta much of column two added together, right? That's, that's a one way to, a very useful way to think about matrix multiplication. And we're going to apply that in spades here with this understanding. So think of, Think of now uh, one of these guys where you have this vector. It's just only got one element in it. That's one. And all the rest is zero. What is that going to do? It's going to pick out that column, right? It's going to say, I want only column one. Thank you very much. And uh, only one of column one. And it's going to give that to you, right? And if it has, you know, zero, one here, it's going to say, I want only column two, right? Okay, so you, you could think of that. Um, uh, and by so doing, you can realize that when you multiply, when you multiply by these, these elements um, of this vector, um, you can actually use this to read out how would the vector, tr how would the matrix act on a vector like one zero? Well, by multiplying the vector times that, you realize the matrix by that vector, you realize it just picks up the first column. So the first column tells you, if you look at the matrix, the first column tells you, how does it act on a one zero here? If I give it this as an input, what do I get out as a result? That if, if you look at the matrix entries, the col first column of the matrix tells you, tells you if you were to give in something that's just one zero, what would you get out, right? Okay, so I get the sense people are lost here. Um, if I were to feed in zero one, what do I get out? I get out zero two, right? I get out the second column. So the columns of a matrix, you know, if I have AX, the columns of X, if you look at them, tell you what you would get out if you have corresponding, you know, val uh, values X that are these successive um, 
these successive elements of this matrix, uh, of this basis, one, zero, zero, one, for example, for 2D, uh, for 2D matrix A. So by looking at the matrix, you could see this turns one zeros into two ones. This turns zero ones. If X is zero one, what you get out is zero twos. Okay. Um, if you look at a matrix like that, then you can start to understand how does it operate on the space. Okay. So, so here, if we consider y equals ax, um, we have some input vector x. We're going to get some output vector y. And my argument is, if you can look at A and see how does it transform x's that are, say, 1, 0 versus 0, 1, you can then start to understand how does it operate on an arbitrary x. How does it, how does it transform the space in, in a way that it would, it would impact an arbitrary x? Okay? Um, uh, and I'd like to walk through this um, with you here, but the basic idea is to kind of look at the, at the values of successive columns of A mm -hmm. and use it to reason. So here's, here's a, a diagram which I find very helpful in this regard for the particular case of, of a matrix that's two by two. So it maps input vectors of dimension two to output vectors of dimension two. Do you see that? Okay. Um, so let's, let's take this one here. So the original, the original image is this one, F. And if we have an identity matrix, if we take F, we'll get F back in exactly this form. It will map 1, 0 to 1, 0. It'll map 0, 1 to 0, 1, okay? So, so if we have a vector in this direction, in the x direction here, it'll map it onto itself. There's no change. If we have a, a, a vector in the y direction, it'll map it onto itself. By contrast, let's consider this matrix here, okay? One, zero, zero, two. So that's almost like this one, the difference being that second element is, is, is in, in the lower right, it's, it's two rather than one, right? Okay, um, so here, if we consider how this acts on a vector in the direction one, zero, that's this direction here. Well, if we multiply this matrix by one, zero, what do we get back? One zero. We just get remember, multiplying a matrix by a vector that's just one for one of the columns and zero for the others will give you back the corresponding column, right? So if I multiply this matrix by a matrix in the x direction, one zero, it will that that make that vector will just pick out which column. The first, right? If I multiply this matrix times one zero. If you want, think about it in your head again to rehearse it. But you've got the first, the result will be a, will be a vector. And that vector will be 1 times this 1 plus 0 times that. And for this next row, it will be 1 times 0 plus 0 times 2, which will be 0, right? So in short, multiplying this matrix by 1, 0 will give you back the first column of this matrix. In short, which is unchanged, right? So this matrix doesn't change at all vectors in that direction, in the x direction, okay? Um, how does it change vectors in the y direction? Let's suppose we multiply this matrix by 0, 1. What do we get back? Well, 0, 1 will just give us back the second column, 0, 2. So this will take, if, if we give it something that's 0, 1, it'll give us back something that's 0, 2. In short, it will stretch it in that direction. So the, 
net effect of this matrix is to take an arbitrary vector, leave the x component, the x direction component of it unchanged, but to stretch the y component. So it's going to take this original f, this original image, not distort it in the y direct and the x direction, but but stretch it in the y direction. It it sort of pulls it up. So things that were originally at height one go to height two, okay? And, and the key thing is, this is a linear algebra. Any vector is a linear combination of the basis vectors, one, zero, and zero, one. And so we can understand how it affects any vector because any vector will just be affected by decomposing that vector into its zero one component and its one zero component, its zero one component will be unaffected. Its x direction will be unaffected. Its y direction will be stretched. Okay, now let's let's continue to go through some more of these. Okay, um, so you notice I've drawn these these arrows to each of the corresponding columns. Let's take this one here. So so this is a matrix that's minus one zero and zero one, and if we want to understand how does this operate on vectors that were in this direction, like shown with this f up, up here? How does it operate on them? Well, OK, suppose we had a vector 0, 1. Oh, 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 OK, that, that was exciting. Where did that, where'd that, oh, I know where that went. That's, oh, oh my gosh. OK, here we go. Um, so if I have a vector 0, 1, if I have a vector that comes off this, uh, sorry, 1, 0, 1, 0, come off in this direction, what does that turn into? A vector 1, 0, if I multiply it by this matrix L2 times this vector 1, 0, what do I get back? I get back the first column, which is minus 1, 0, right? What does that do? to that vector. So if I had a vector that was pointed this way, um, it's one, zero, it turns into what? Minus one, zero. I multiply it by the matrix, so its input is one, zero, its output will be minus one, zero. So what does that do to that vector? It flips it. It flips it around. Okay, how about a vector how about a vector that's uh, 0, 1? What does that do? Well, vector 0, 1, what, if we multiply by this matrix, which, what does it get back? 0, 1. It, it just picks out that second element, the second, second column of the matrix. So is that, if we have a vector 0, 1, is that, that's a vertical one here. Is that affected at all? No. It's, if you put in a vector 0, 1, you'll get out a vector 0, 1. L2 times that vector will be 0, 1. And so that's left the same. And so this f will just be flipped around. Something that was going here is now going to go here. Something that was going up here is still going to go up here. So the f doesn't change its orientation in the y axis. It just flipped. Do you get that? And, and similarly, I mean, let's, let's look at, at at least uh, one other, other of these, right? Um, maybe we'll look at, um, uh, okay, so how about, how about this one here? Um, uh, so this one is 0, 1, minus 1, 1, right? So, so a vector that was originally in the direction 1, 0, what is that going to give back when I multiply L, L6 by that? It's going to give back 0, 1. So that vector that used to be in this direction horizontally turns into a vector that's now 0, 1. So that's vertical. It's pointing up, right? And a vector that was in the direction 1, 0, sorry, 0, 1, turns into a vector that's what? Minus one one. Okay, so that that becomes a vector that goes it goes in the negative x direction. That's the minus one and one in the y direction. So it turns into a vector 
So this vector that used to go straight up turns it to something that's kind of skewed out in that direction. And as a result, it's kind of like we took the axes of this f over here and we kind of scrunched them together and rotated them, right? And it scrunches this f in that sort of way. But it all passes through directly because of the linearity of, of the situation, okay? Um, and you can uh, work through this with other examples. But the fundamental principle here is if you look upon vector as matrices as geometric operators here on vectors, by reading out successive columns in the matrix, you can understand how does it affect, how does it operate on particular elements in each of the cardinal directions here, each of the fundamental directions. And that will tell you how it operates on an arbitrary vector, okay? So you have a sense of how it transforms or squishes space. And that's exactly what is going on here, okay? Um, so if we have this, vector, this, this matrix that we wrote on the board here, minus 1, 1, 0, minus 0 0.5. Now let's consider as we go out in the x direction. That's in the direction 1, 0. What does that turn into as we go out in the x direction? The Jacobian is saying, for this linear system, the Jacobian is saying the rate of change will be just that Jacobian times that vector. So it will be, as we go in the x direction, as, this, as we have successively larger state vectors for the x stock associated with this, right? The, the, whoa, the X stock uh, associated with this, as we have successfully larger values of this, and maybe zero we'll consider initially for this, but as we have successively larger ones for that, um, we will be going, we'll have vectors of the form one zero or two zero, et cetera. A vector of the form one zero, what would it pick out from this matrix? Minus one one. Right? So here, if we consider Js, where S is, say, 1, 0, it will give back to us minus 1, 1. And that will be, because Js, that, because that's the Jacobian matrix, that will give us the rate of change right? in, in each of these. So it's going to tell us it's going to be changing in the direction of minus 1, 1. Well, where's minus 1, 1? Okay. So minus one means it's going to be going towards less x, and the one means it's going to be going upwards. And that's why as you go out along x-axis, these arrows are sort of successively pointing up at this negative 45 degree line, right? That's the minus one, one here. Okay, now let's think about, how about as you get larger and larger in the y direction as, as you get things that are of the form, vectors of the form 0, 1, right? Um, where y is larger and larger, or maybe x is for simplicity and if initially think about it, 0. As we go out in that direction, what do we see in terms of the, the, the what, do, what do they pick out? It's something of 0, 1, what is it going to pick out? 0 minus 5. Zero minus five. So, that vector is going to go in what direction? Negative y direction. So the further we go out positively in y, the more the, the, the matrix is going to give us, multiplying by the matrix will give us success of multiples of minus 0 0.5, which will be things in the opposite direction, right? And remember, multiplying by this matrix, is, this is a Jacobian matrix, multiplying by the state by it gives us the what? Rate of change of that state. Mm -hmm. And so what it's telling us is as we go in the y direction, the rate of change will be, will be negative, right? Okay, now if we were to go out in a in some combination of directions, like in a 45 degree line, 
Well, we have to reason about it's kind of a, a balance of these two, right? Um, we have some component from the X that's going to be pulling us in this kind of uh, upper left direction, this northwest direction. And then we have some component from the Y that's going to be pulling us negative. And at some point, they're going to meet, right? We're not going to be going Y anymore. We're just going to be going negative X, right? Um, and it's going to be kind of a blended combination of that, depending how much X and how much Y there is, right? Um, and we're, in general, we'd have to go twice as far up um, as we do over to, to have the sort of positive one from the from the the x the the, the element of of, neg of movement and the negative y rate of change to equal the, the the sorry the rate of change increase in y due to moving over an x for that to be canceled out by the the result from going in the y direction we need to go twice as far in y because this is minus 0.5 and this is one and that's why these flat lines um, are occurring they require us to go up more than we have to go over to get that cancellation. The, the rate of change of y is, is, is boosted as we go over an x towards the right. It's lessened as we go up in y. That pulls back against it. And so we, we get these, uh, these flat lines here. Okay? So matrices are going to operate on this, uh, on this space. And here they're operating over the entire space. Okay, um, and uh, sometimes these operate in ways that are are somewhat unexpected. Okay, um, so for example, if we look here at uh, a feedback system, um, which involves um, example two, this is delayed feedback. Okay, um, so this is associated with a um, an oscillation. We saw this actually at 394,858, and we'll be discussing it more next time. It is linear, but basically what's going on here is that y is is being shaped by um, by x. Let me let me ask you. This may look like a first order or second order delay, but it's not. What's going on that's different here? So we have dx dt equals some value minus y of t, and dy dt equals x minus y of t. This dy dt, x minus y of t, that should look to you like a second order delay. You have x flowing into y and y flowing out. And, but what's different here? Well, if we have x equals minus y of t. And this is a system that comes with um, uh, feedback phenomenon, but feedback where there's a delay in perception, for example, okay? So it's kind of like um, we have a, uh, a perception of the situation as to our location, but then there's our actual location. And we are operating off of our perception, but um, our perception takes time to adjust. Um, I'll go into this a little bit more less next time. But what I want to highlight here is the same basic sort of reasoning. That here we have a Jacobian. Um, and by reading off this Jacobian, 0, 1, minus 1, minus 1. By reading that off, we can see how does it operate on successive vectors in the plane. Um, and one of the things that this is telling us, if we look at that, is that um, uh, as we go in the, the x direction, larger and larger, we're going to be going in the y, the rate of change will be increasing in the y direction. That's the, the one here. Meanwhile, if we go in the y direction, larger and larger, where is this going to be pulling us? How is this going to pull us? It's going to pull us, the rate of change will be negative in terms of x and negative in terms of y. So as we go 
further and further in the y direction will be going according to these arrows here. It's probably goes down in x and down in y. Down in x and down in y. So in the x direction, it's pushing us up in x. Y direction, it's pulling us down in y. And down into the left, down in x, down in y. And what we get is this sort of spiral out. Um, we're going in the x direction, it'll direct us up, and then we'll be swooped down, and then we'll direct up, et cetera, okay? So this is another example of a linear system where it's very useful to view these, this matrix is operating on, on, this, uh, uh, on this space. Now, when it comes to nonlinear systems, I'll simply state that, and I'll, I'll go in and show it, that the same reasoning will occur. But you'll be reasoning about the action of matrices not in the space as a whole, but a matrix that applies right around what's called a fixed point, right around what's called the critical point, where the system's in equal, equilibrium. And you'll reason how does the matrix sort of twist space here uh, right around that fixed point in a way that uh, gives you an understanding of what happens around that fixed point. And particularly give you an understanding of, uh, for example, to what degree that fixed point is stable or unstable. Um, so we'll, we'll come to that. But uh, next time we'll start with this delayed feedback one and we will go on to, um, to use that to cement our intuitions with how matrices operate um, and to, um, to then leap into the, the nonlinear domain. One final thing I'll say here is that if anyone's interested in exploring these more, uh, Wolfram Alpha, which many of you may be familiar with, it's uh, uh, Wolfram is Steve Wolfram, the founder of uh, uh, the company that produces Mathematica by the same name. Um, and they have a nice online system for, for um, reasoning about the action of matrices geometrically. And so you can go there and, and play around with matrices and see how they shape space for matrices of different forms. Um, it will show you, you know, how does it change from this gray one to this red one through the operation of the matrix, okay? And they have this page for geometric transformations that has some quite, um, quite nice sort of functionality to, to try out different, uh, different matrices. Okay, so uh, that's all for today. Um, I did include a first exercise. Um, for placement, uh, it's due on Thursday, so be sure to do it prior to class, and we'll talk about the um, the solutions at class. Okay. Um, uh, also, Christine is working on makeup classes. We're like three or four classes behind now, and so she's trying to situate particular makeup times um, at certain points. We um, are probably going to scatter them in different days and different weeks, um, but we're going to make up all the classes that we've uh, we've missed, and I'm hoping to get that pinned down in the next uh, few days here. Christina has a set of suggested dates, and we just want to make sure it doesn't conflict with people's schedules. Okay, so that's all, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you on Thursday to continue our exploration into the nonlinear domain.